It was the beginning of October, a foggy dawn. This time of the year the swamp's dampness usually spreads all over the valley. Young Hilda cursed while she put on her boots and grabbed a cloak. Damn those goats. They think they are so smart, they could just watch themselves, she said. In the yard, the goats answered with a loud and defying bleat, as if they were saying, it's your job, little cunt. Being a goat herder is a boring and lonely job for a blooming lass like Hilda. No wonder she has imaginary conversations with her goats. The quickest way to the steepest slope of the hill, the favorite place for the goats to graze and the hardest for her to climb, meant walking by the forked rock. Hilda hated that place, not because she is a superstitious simpleton, as the goats usually tease her with, but because people tend to leave offerings to the gods there. Though most of them are benign, such as fruits, flowers and little straw dolls, Hilda has seen too many dead cats and roosters lying there. Once she even found a black goat. The herd went crazy that day. I will not look, I will not look, Hilda murmured to herself. Sometimes she didn't but, when she did, something nasty was sure to lay there. That day she looked. Her hysterical screams filled the air and were accompanied by the nervous bailing of her herd, awakening the whole village. Holson, the stable owner, was the first to arrive, but not the first to see what it was all about. He had his hands full with sobbing Hilda. Martha Bowie, the innkeeper's wife, was probably the first to see it. At least she was the one telling the gruesome details to everyone else. A dead human baby, newborn by the fragile look of it, covered in blood and dirt. The umbilical cord was tied around the neck. And worse the infant was all cut up. The insides laid out in an eerie pattern near the corpse. The poor thing was empty and flat, like an old straw doll. The captain of the guard was summoned. Infanticide is a serious business even around these parts. Auntie Jeannie, the village wise woman, was called in to testify. She was not aware of anyone expecting right now. She also clarified the poor thing was not a newborn, but a stillborn or an unborn fetus. The body was quickly removed from the crossroads and delivered to the Earl's alchemist for examination. Gerhardt, the alchemist, agreed with the wise woman's diagnosis. The mother was never found, and the story would have probably become one of those weird tales to scare children if it wasn't for all that happened afterwards.